It's Nolan. What's going on, beautiful people? It's the Kid J. Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. Hey, man, we got a nice little Let's Talk show planned out for y'all today. It's been a little minute since we did one of these. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was at one point we were doing two a days on these Let's Talk sessions, but unfortunately, I hate to keep bringing it up, but I have to because YouTube has been ruining the fun. They've been ruining the fun for me. Been ruining the fun on my releases and the way in which I communicate with y'all, which is also how y'all receive my content. You know what I'm saying? Because when I was originally doing the two less talk sessions a day, they were accepting my content. They were not ad limiting it. They were not trying to uh, basically steal money from me in, in the simplest way that I could say. So everything was smooth. But at a certain point, they started just doing these ad suitability things, which means that I literally have to get um, people at YouTube to watch my video and manually say yes or no, uh, this is suitable uh, to be monetized on YouTube. Right. So that's been messing up my content schedule, which has uh, has uh, influenced me to either slice up parts of my larger videos or do single subject videos, which they seem to be a lot more receptive to when I upload them all of a sudden. So it's kind of throwing off the way that I do things and forcing me to create stocks of content so that I can have it in the system for those whatever 24 hours, 12 hours that they need to do before they get a real person to watch my shit to approve it. So then what it's doing is it's forcing me to put content out a day after I'm actually recording it. All right. Of course, I just want to keep it transparent with y'all because I've been this way since the beginning, but we're going to get into the show. Okay. So we're going to be talking about Cardi B. Unfortunately, it seems that she's facing some sort of copyright infringement lawsuit over her enough single. We're going to get into that. Um, it seems like Diddy is now under uh, a criminal investigation in New York, meaning that he may have indeed a criminal case. Up to this point, everything that we've seen have all been civil suits, lawsuits, people looking for money for damages in which Diddy allegedly inflicted on them, which I believe whatever the fuck they say for the most part. But now the state of New York is about to start trying him for criminal charges. Right. So we've been talking about this ever since November of last year with Cassie putting her lawsuit out, getting her money, the unspecified damages. They say somewhere in the ballpark of 30 million dollars. This whole little rod situation came out at the top of the year. And then so many others have come out since then. All these Jane Doe's and different people and all of them have been civil suits. Well, we, we don't got to look no further. Now they're about to start trying to put his ass behind bars. I don't know if it's going to be successful, but the wheels are now turning. So we're going to get into that today as well. We're going to talk about Miss BB Rexa. OK, some of y'all may not really know who B.B. Rexa is. Just know that she's a singer songwriter in the music industry. Of course, she's more on the pop side of things. But over the course of the last few days, she has been um, hinting at all of the information that she has about the music industry. She's threatening to expose the industry for all of their wrongdoings and transgressions that have been put on to her. So we're going to get into all of that in just a few as well. And then we're going to also get into the rumor mill of Ice Spice and UK rapper Central C allegedly dating. OK, they've been spotted together out in London over the course of the last couple of days shopping and stuff like that. But y'all know. It was already understood to a degree that her boyfriend was supposed to be her producer, Riot. So what the hell is really going on? We're going to get into that momentarily as well. But we're going to start with Miss Cardi B. OK. So they state rapper Cardi B is facing allegations of stealing other artists music. Say it ain't so. Stealing artists music after a Texas duo claimed her song Enough Miami infringes on their copyrighted material. Artist Joshua Frostro and Miguel Aguilar. Better known as Stin Jody and Kamika 1956. What the fuck type of names y'all got? Blah. They filed a lawsuit on Wednesday of this week arguing that Cardi and her team used portions of their song Greasy Fry Bread without permission, according to documents obtained by Texas outlet ValleyCentral.com. 
Jody and Kamika claim that they've endured substantial financial losses, excuse me, financial losses and harm to their reputations and marketability as a result of this infringement. They're seeking $50 million on some Chelsea Clinton shit. <laughs> According to court records, I don't even think the motherfucking song generated $50 million. I'm pretty certain it didn't. So what the hell is y'all talking about? In addition to the white rapper, the document lists O.G. Parker, DJ Swanko, Celebrity Booking Agency, Atlantic Records, and Warner Music Group as defendants. Enough, a.k.a. Miami, debuted at number nine on the Billboard Hot 100 following its release in March and became Cardi's first top 10 solo song since 2021's Up. Greasy Fry Bread is a song that was released in November of 2021, and it was featured in a promotional campaign for the FX series Reservation Dogs. OK, so they saying, hey, this ain't no just no random ass song we put out. This shit done been it been featured in TV shows. Right. So. They say it remains unclear if Wednesday's lawsuit will affect her new album release, which has not yet been announced as far as the date, but Cardi B has been pretty active um, posting snippets. The other day she posted a snippet of a, a song interpolating Janet Jackson's Funny How Time Flies. And then I believe over the course of the last day or so, she came out and, and played a snippet of a song that's kind of on some uh, New York drill, sexy drill. I told y'all I hate that drill shit. I was actually quite disappointed when I heard her on it, you know, but I know she's an artist from New York. She's from the Bronx. And I know uh, about a year or so ago, she was talking about how she wanted to fuck with the drill shit a little bit. But um, I'm really hoping she doesn't delve too far into that shit on the album because that's going to make me scale back from my listenership. Okay. Now, unfortunately, what I cannot do on this here production is actually play greasy fry bread on this video to do a live assessment of what this thing sounds like and try to see where they were sampled. But what I will do is take a couple seconds of my own personal time to go look this record up and see what the hell is going on. And I'll give you all my quick assessment of whether or not I think I hear it in Cardi's enough. OK. Um, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I took a little second. Y'all didn't see the second, of course, but um, they might have a case. Now, what is going to be interesting is to see what the source of the material is. Right. I'm going to see if I can play this out loud for y'all. And get away with it for a second, because I want y'all to hear the beginning of this record. And this is kind of where things got a little tricky for me. OK, so I'm going to play this out loud. Hopefully we don't get flagged on YouTube for playing this little portion. It'll be probably around five seconds. All right. So we had to stop it there. Right. So we could be in the safe zone of some sort. But as you can hear in the in, in the beginning of the beat, it's that bump, 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 which is the actual bass line and the, and the primary uh, melody in the beat for Cardi B's enough. Now, the reason why I say they have a case or may have a case is because they're very similar and they have uh, almost the same texture. The reason why this is going to be interesting is, like I said, where did it come from? Is this a loop that's already available in a in a uh, DI DAW? Excuse me, DAW, like in your recording program, I should say, in the producing program. Did it come standard? Is it a stock loop? Um, is this something that is in a splice pack, or one of these other companies that produce sounds for producers to make? Did it come from that? I don't know if I'm sure a musicologist is going to have to come in and say, did y'all sample that intro to create your beat? And if that is the case, Cardi B is going to have to take the fall for it. Unfortunately, Cardi B don't make no fucking beats. But her producers 
O.G. Parker are named in the lawsuit. Other producers are uh, DJ Swanko. So they co-produced the record together. So they're going to have to bring in O.G. Parker and DJ Swanko to figure out where did y'all get that intro? Where did y'all get that that little baseline thing there? That little synthesizer. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Did y'all hear our record? Did you sample it? Were you inspired by it? Of course, they're probably going to say no, but a musicologist could come in there and say, it's too close for comfort. You're going to have to take it. Now, do I believe even in the event of this happening, are they going to get $50 million? Hell no. It'll be settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. But You know, we're just going to have to see where it goes from here. You know what I mean? That shit is a little funny in the light. I ain't going to lie. Their song was released in 2021. Cardi's was released in 2024. Now, Cardi does have. Cardi does have all the original files and things in her uh, in her computer. She already had to deal with controversy over this particular record because Bia came out and was saying that she was biting the style biting the beat, biting the ad libs and whatever. And she went in her archives and said, hey, this song was started way back here. We had already been laying this stuff down. I have voice recordings that prove this is an original idea before your version, before your song ever came out. She's going to have to go go and produce the same all over again, right? Now, when I see somebody come out asking for $50 million, it sounds to me like they wanted to get some press. It sounds to me like you want to get mentioned on inside the industry, if I'm going to be all the way honest. You've succeeded in getting that. I mean, y'all already have 750,000 views on YouTube. This uh, this music video for the uh, Greasy Fry Bread song was released by FX Networks. So it's under it's under my assumption that FX Network probably owns this song anyway. And that there lies why I think this is happening. I can't say for sure the business on this, but if FX comes out and releases a music video for a song that was featured in a TV series, that tells me that FX owns the master to that song. FX may even own the publishing on that song. Or, yeah, the publishing. Now, these two guys... Uh, Jody and uh, what was the other motherfucker? Let me go back to this. Jody and uh, Kamika. If y'all are the original songwriters on this song, y'all would still be in the credits. Y'all would probably have like a 50 50 split or something around there. Y'all are probably not getting the, the royalties that you wanted because FX is getting the pub on that and FX owns the master, which means they're the ones that's producing the money. You're probably not getting no crazy royalties. Your royalties may have stopped. I don't know how popular this show is or if they're still running season one episodes of this show in 2024. And I think that may be the issue, right? You're not getting the money that you thought you were going to get. They may have paid y'all, you know, a flat rate, 10000 15000 whatever FX had in the budget for the record. And you like, man, we got 700 something thousand views on YouTube and we're not getting paid off none of those views. The song been out for a couple years. This is supposed to be our hit and we ain't getting nothing off of it. And then Cardi B comes out with a song with the same uh, synthesizer or whatever. So it's like this is an opportunity for us to cash in. Which I can't be mad at. And if you can prove it in court, y'all going to, you know what I mean? This is one of the, this is one of the better cases that I've seen where somebody came out with copyright infringement lawsuits. A lot of them be fucked up. A lot of them be some bullshit. A lot of them be, you know, like that Megan Thee Stallion when that shit was ridiculous. (laughs) The shit got thrown out. But this one, I don't know. It's going to be a close call. You know, it's well known. I fuck with Cardi on this channel, but I feel like this particular case is a little bit too close for comfort. It's a toss up. It's about what everybody can prove. They're going to have to duke this shit out, to be honest. You know, and if if their song was wrongfully sampled, they deserve the money. If it could be proved that they wrongfully sampled this record, 
greasy fry bread ass niggas need they chili to go with their bread. It is what it is. All right. Speaking of court cases, again, we're going to get into Diddy. OK. So, boom. A federal grand jury in New York City is hearing evidence in a criminal investigation involving Sean Diddy Combs, according to a new report. Two sources familiar with the matter told NBC News that the disgraced music mogul and his legal team have been notified by authorities in the Southern District of New York that he is the subject of an ongoing probe. A law enforcement official confirmed to Deadline that Diddy and his legal team were formally notified of the proceedings last week, but did not give details on what claims this investigation involves. A spokesperson for the U.S. Attorney's Office did not immediately respond to a request for comment. While the proceedings are a part of a criminal investigation, sources say there's no indication that the Harlem born rapper will soon be charged with any crimes. The Department of Justice defines the subject of an investigation as a person whose conduct is within the scope of the grand jury's investigation, whereas a target is defined as a person as to whom the prosecutor or the grand jury has substantial evidence linking him or her to the commission of a crime. That is actually a pretty big distinction. Subject of an investigation versus target. So basically what they're trying to say is he's a piece of a larger investigation Whereas if he was the target, he would be the primary subject, right? I think that's the best way to say it. News of the alleged criminal investigation comes after yet another trafficking lawsuit was just filed on Wednesday against the Grammy winning artist. We talked about this. Uh, Adria English, a former uh, adult film star who went by the stage name I'm Unique. She accused him of forcing her to drink alcohol laced with narcotics and have sexual encounters with various people at his infamous all white parties, according to documents obtained by TMZ. Miss English is the ninth person to file such charges that are in line with the same stuff against Diddy, whose music and media empire has been unraveled following a lawsuit from R&B singer Cassie Ventura in November. Now, remember. She accused Combs of trafficking, S.A., and physical abuse during their years-long relationship with one alleged incident closely resembling that, what was later seen in a hotel surveillance video of him assaulting her in 2016, as detailed previously in her lawsuit. Right? In March, authorities raided Combs' homes in Miami and Los Angeles as part of what Homes, Homeland Security confirmed was a federal trafficking probe. So as of today, there is an on ongoing investigation into Diddy to what extent they're investigating him to what charges they're investigating him in New York at this time. We don't know, but we do know it's happening. Okay. So as more details and information is disseminated to the net, I will come back and let y'all know more about that stuff. Up next, we've got Miss BB Rexa. Again, I know some of y'all probably don't know who who BB Rexa is. Some of y'all don't give a fuck about who she is. But to her account, BB Rexa is tired of the hypocrisy in the music industry. Even white A-list pop stars are treated like slaves. They state. By record label executives. This is the part that we never hear about. We don't see too many white motherfuckers come out and say, hey, man, they out here fucking me. They stealing my money. They stealing my songs. I'm broke, nigga. We don't hear them come out too much and say that. That's not to say that they don't receive the same treatment as the black artists, but it's always the black artists that come out and cry foul. We haven't seen too many of them come out. Well, earlier this week, she threatened to bring down the entire industry if things don't change in her situation. She says, and I quote, I could bring down a big chunk of this industry. I am frustrated. I have been undermined. I've been so quiet for the longest time. I haven't seen the signs, even though people constantly are bringing them up and they have been so obvious. And when I have spoken up. I've been silenced and punished by the industry. Things must change or I'm telling all of my troops the good, the bad, 
The ugly. Big said, get your money. They ain't saying they gonna love me. I'm telling y'all the good, the bad, the ugly when your money ain't funny. What they say? And the money get funny and your days ain't sunny. I'm showing you the good, the bad, the ugly niggas get pounds and hug me. No, they really want to slug me. I'm showing you the good, the bad, the ugly. And this is for the hood. You got to love me. BB Rex are coming out on some consequence and Kanye shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. From there, BB responded to a fan who came out and said, what happened again? She says, again, you haven't even heard 5%. You have no idea. Okay. So then she goes on to hint at the injustices that she's endured as a songwriter. She wrote David Guetta's 2015 single titled Hey Mama. BB was upset that she did not receive credit for her vocals on the track, which also ended up featuring Nicki Minaj and Afro Jack on the record. So she so there's a song with David Guetta, Nicki Minaj and Afro Jack. BB sung background vocals on this song, but never received her credit, which means that she ain't received her pay pay neither. When a fan asked what stopped her from speaking out, she says they punish you. Other followers suggested BB's tweet was a stunt to market her latest single on the drama, which dropped five days ago. She said, marketing, I have no budget for that. I'm fed up. In a following tweet, she states, this is not just coming from a place of anger. It's sadness. I'm sitting in my hotel room in London, crying my eyes out. I felt hopeless for the longest time. I've been walking a lot through this city and meeting fans and they have really ignited something inside of me. So she's getting love out there in London, but unfortunately all the love, all the adoration, all of the people coming up wanting daps and hugs, photos and shoulder shrugs. It ain't equaling up to what she got in that bank account. The cheddar is not chattering, but the industry metal has been meddling. She says, thank you to everyone checking up on me. I'm working through these issues and fighting for what I deserve. Many news outlets have asked for an interview. If you want to write about me, please support my new music. Thank you again. Love you. Now, she ain't the only person going through this. She's far from the only. She's far from the first. Won't be the last. But if her music been getting taken, she doing she writing songs that getting stolen. She doing background vocals for people not getting paid for them. You know, she's in a label situation where they're not putting no money into her, but she's stuck in a contract that she can't get out of. She's getting no royalties. She got to go perform to get her money. And the label's probably getting a portion of that money that she's getting out on the road. This is a story we've heard so many times before. But to be honest, if it's fucked up like that, Go ahead and say what you got to say, BB. Go ahead and let the motherfucking leak fall through the faucet. You know what I mean? Hell. If it's too cold outside for you, I go ahead and goddamn just turn the knob on that motherfucking little just do little droplets at night. But we're gonna need we're gonna need you to finish the job. Don't threaten to bring the motherfucking industry down. Bring the house down. Hell, yeah. we need to know. Am I, <laughs> am I wrong? Am I fucking up? Am I tripping? Feel free to tell me now. Shit. Now, we've also got uh, Coco Jones coming out season what we can expect from the next season of Bel Air and any major collaborations on her next album. Now, I don't know if she's going to actually tell us who's on the album. But let's go ahead and listen in on what she got to say. Hopefully this video come up because it's got down. Oh, y'all trying to play me a goddamn ad. Here we go. What would it mean for you to step into another Disney role as Princess Tiana? I think that would be such an honor. I mean, Princess Tiana is the epitome of beauty and class and grace, and she can cook, and I love to cook on the low, you know? I think it would be amazing, and maybe one day my daughter would get to see me as a princess. That's iconic. Why do you want to 
And now you are about to get into a new era, okay? So I heard you gonna be dropping an album in the fall. So what can you see? You know what? I have some collaborations that I'm so excited about. I um, I'm just more confident as a creator. You know, I've gotten so much love and support with my EP that it's really inspired me to just dream bigger, go harder. I know that's right. <laughs> and as far as Bel Air, so I know you're not only singing, but you are acting, and Bel Air is returning soon. Yes. So what does Hillary look like this season? You know what? Hillary is going through a pinnacle life change. Yeah, I really uh. I don't think you guys have ever seen her in this light, and uh, don't be mad at me whenever she does what she does. Please, please. Oh, that sounds exciting. And speaking of life changes, so after you won a Grammy, how has your life changed? Man, you know what? It's really inspired me to dream bigger because the Grammy was on my lock screen since I was freaking 12. So now I'm like, okay, don't put any limits on yourself. Dream bigger and don't be afraid to dream big, you know? How do you think, like, your story, because you've been very transparent about that, and I love it. How do you think that's prepared you for where you are now? You know what? I think I couldn't appreciate these highs had I not been through the silence and the stillness. So, for me, it's all perfect timing. Yeah. And when it comes to working alongside your cast on Bel Air and Will Smith being, like, the overhead of it, has he given you any advice as it comes to navigating your career and acting at all? Will is super amazing. He actually came to set as we were wrapping up um, season three and really just let us ask him questions, you know, and was super down to earth. And that to me is louder than, than a lot of words. Your, your personality, your character, your spirit, you can feel it, you know. I love mm -hmm. that. And a fellow R&B singer, Usher, is being honored tonight. What does that mean to you? Man, you know what? Usher is such a multi-talented guy and that has always been my goal to be able to put on a killer show have the vocals and now i need to learn how to roller skate so one more thing i need to learn usher thanks a lot i'm still not compared enough to you yet i'll get there though i'm on my skates tonight you will definitely get there and what's your favorite song of his can you sing us a little bit hmm you know what i have so many songs but probably these are my confessions i'm not gonna give you too much not gonna give you too much now just get a little one to they not like us what does that mean to you as like a fashionista a singer an actress a fellow black woman Oof. i mean i guess i would speak to as a black woman they not like us i would say there's an authenticity and a um a unstoppability that black people have that i don't know i don't know they not like us when it comes to that one okay <laughs> to ask you what are your future goals because I feel like you're in the thick of it and obviously I know you want to be present in that but as you look ahead like what's next for Coco well my debut album this fall you know that is a huge goal that I have yet to have ever put out an album which is crazy and I want to tour again and I want to just you know go up in the charts and go from there yeah and as far as being a part of this industry where you have like your peers at this point are like Beyonce and like Jenna Jackson the Great. Not too much, not too much. Please, not too much. <laughs> you know, and like the super uber talented women. So how do you draw inspiration from them? Um, Beyonce, I definitely feel like is inspiration when she wakes up in the morning, you know. Um, but actually studying, you know, the longevity of their careers and um, the interviews that they have had throughout the years are always super insightful. Performances, watching some of the greats perform is always a huge learning lesson. Thank you, Coco. So have fun. <laughs> so clearly that was uh, Coco Jones at the BET Awards on the red carpet. And she was over there talking about, you know, doing the Usher tribute, which she absolutely bodied, killed. She was one of the only ones that took the stage that I was like 100% behind. Y'all saw my review of the show the other day. We ain't got to get back into that. But, um... She also talks about, you know, what to expect from the next iteration of the Bel Air show on Peacock, talking about the forthcoming album, which is what I'm looking forward to. She talked about the Here We Go rec record that's out, which is dope. You know what I'm saying? Super dope. Really soulful. You know, another one of those things that I like about her is that she's actually embracing her R&B placement in the in the in, in, in the game. So many other ladies are out here producing R&B music and kind of shying away from it and want to be seen as pop and want to be seen as this and other and alternative and all this other shit. Coco Jones is like, man, fuck all that. 
I'm going to get out this bitch and sing. I'm going to sing my motherfucking heart out all the way to the top. If y'all don't fuck with me for that, so be it. But I'm going to do my mother effing thing. I support that. I like that. I like the gumption she has. I like that she stands on business with her talent, her vocals. And I like that Here We Go record. You know what I mean? I ain't going to lie to y'all. So Coco Jones' latest single, Here We Go, Uh Uh-Oh, appears on Billboard's adult R&B airplay chart this week. The Lenny Williams sample song debuted at number 29 in the airplay chart, led by Keith Sweat's Lay You Down. The song, of course, samples, uh, you know, Lenny Williams or whatever. But that's also the overnight celebrity sample from Kanye and Twista. I thought Cardiac did a really good job on there. And I really love the fact that she's working with Cardiac because he's not really well known for doing R&B tracks. But that shit was nice. Ain't gonna lie to you. I think that motherfucker needs to be on a, you know what I mean, on some other charts. Okay? This is Joan's second single to appear on the adult R&B airplay chart and her third visit overall. Her previous visits include her Grammy-winning hit, I See You and Spend the Night, which is from BJ the Chicago Kid's Gravy album. The former song peaked at number two on adult air, excuse me, adult R&B airplay and spent 33 weeks on the chart. Now, unfortunately, I don't know if this is going to hit the same way that ICU did. I mean, that was a one of one. That was a very it came at the right time. Everything was, you know, what I'm saying it was a perfect storm, as they call it. And people go their entire lives trying to recreate that lightning in a bottle. I like that she didn't try to tap into the same shit. She went with something different. Still kept it very smooth, beautiful, you know what I'm saying? Musical. So I'm happy for it, you know, but to try to duplicate that success, that's tough. Elsewhere on the billboard, here we go, uh uh-oh, rises from number 13 and number 12 on the Hot R&B Songs chart. On the mainstream R&B Hip Hop Airplay chart, here we go, climbed up two spots to number 15 in its seventh week. Previously, Jones dominated this chart for four weeks with ICU. Here we go is the lead single from Coco Jones' forthcoming debut album, which will be released on High Standard slash Def Jam Recordings. Okay. Speaking on the inspiration behind the song, uh, she said, I think the music inspired the song concept because I feel like with the sample, it feels like this orchestra and like a mystery. It's like this mission happening like 007 or something. I was like, what could be the mission here? And the mission I feel like is to be free from this person that constantly comes back in to get over that hurdle. I'm sure a lot of women out there can relate. Trying to get these bitch ass niggas up off you. (laughs) Get off my body. Every time I try to move on, your ass be trying to come back, trying to text somebody, trying to jump on a DM, trying to put a motherfucking heart emoji in the comments. Get your bitch ass on. I know y'all be going through it. It's real. Jay Nolan cares if don't nobody else care, man. So shout out to Coco Jones. I'm actually looking forward to the album dropping. Going to support that. (laughs) Going to cop that shit too. You feel me? And last but not least, we're going to get into Ice Spice and Central C who are alleged to be dating. Right now, we don't know that to be a fact. But the fact that they was hanging out, canoodling and cozy, buying, you know, what I mean, out spending money together and all this other shit. It does beg what is afoot. So let's go ahead and pull this up real quick. So they was out shopping together and furthermore, they were seen rolling in his car. I'm not going to pull that up at this moment, but they was riding around London. They both had posted it in their story and it definitely hit the rumor mill that these two are dating. Now, both of them allegedly have a significant other, right? Central C supposedly has somebody and Ice Spice, as we've talked about before, is allegedly dating her producer riot, although they have not come out with an official statement or anything like that. He's just always around. Um, he was backstage with her in her dressing room. Um, after her BET performance, nobody else was back there with her and she was definitely changing clothes and all type of stuff back there. You know what I'm saying? 
So the thing here to me, I feel like history is repeating itself with Ice Spice. Now, y'all remember we talked about the whole baby storm thing where she came out and released the text about Ice Spice talking bad on Nikki. And there's some some shit going on right now with Cleo Trapper where she said something about new girls going going at the OGs and Ice Spice posted it on her story and all this type of stuff. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what the fuck. But nonetheless, if you can recall that conversation about Baby Storm, she said that Riot, although he's her boyfriend, he's being made to endure Ice Spice doing celebrity relationships or at least hinting at celebrity relationships couple years back ice spice was linked with the rapper lil tj from new york right and they basically went out shopping he bought her jewelry the same play that we see with central c right now there was canoodling they had a song out where it was very specific about how she did something i did something with my Fuck my man, I come see you or some shit like that. They were spending a lot of time together. Things went bad. Baby Storm says it got so bad that little TJ threatened to go pop off on Riot. He said, I'm a this nigga, as in unalive him. You need to apologize to this nigga for he for I kill. Right? Now, a couple years later, now we see Ice Spice linked with Central C. And the play remains the same, right? Now, when it comes to these two, we're going to get to it. Ice Spice confirmed last year that she was dating someone. We don't know who that someone is, but someone. Although she declined to reveal the identity of her partner, saying she wanted to keep, she wanted fans to keep their focus on what she's here for, which is music. Again, rumors have suggested that Ice's mystery guy is her close collaborator, Riot USA, who's produced many of her biggest hits, including Munch, Princess Diana, and In Her Mood. Central C, meanwhile, has been in a public relationship with social media influencer and fellow British uh, lady, Madeline Argy, since 2022, although the couple were rumored to have taken a break last year. Despite this, fans have been clamoring for Ice Spice and Central C to become hip hop's newest power couple. So clearly the fans would love to see it happen. OK, after they were spotted in the studio earlier this year, people couldn't help but remark how cute their transatlantic duo looked together. People on Instagram said, oh, they would be so cute together. They've been together a little too much. Although the pair have yet to release any music together, a budding friendship has been growing between them at the very least. Central C said, she reminds me of me a bit. She's cool in it. And, you know, in it is UK slang. Um, he says she's humble, down to earth, don't really care too much about the shiny stuff, but knows how to play the game. I think that play the game thing is definitely <laughs> paramount, not the app. He continues, you can hear that in the music and see that in the moves that she makes. And I appreciate that because some people don't really know what they're doing and they take it for granted or they don't take the opportunity and run with it. But she's really running with it right now. When it comes to Central C. No, no, no. Hold on. He also stated. That she's the only peer that he's interested in collaborating with. He says, I wish there were more artists coming up that we could collaborate with, but it seems like it's just me and her right now. All I need in this life is in. I don't know. Ice Spice then returned the favor by saying we've become good friends over the past year, ever since he hopped on the Munch remix, which never came out, referencing their unreleased collaboration. But she continues, but we're going to drop something new and exciting when we're ready. Now, of course, Ice Spice has got an album finna drop. Right? So I would not be surprised if all of this canoodling and doodling and stuff turns out to be placed on the album. Right? It only makes sense. Play into this idea, play into the, you know, 
hate to say it, but the fans, especially her fans, they stupid. Right. So you ain't got to worry about too much. The album drops in like two and a half, three weeks. They hanging out. They got, you know what I mean? They did the Munch remix that never surfaced, so they still have an opening. They were just in the studio earlier this year. She's already ran this play with Lil TJ once before to get the fans talking. We shopping, we doing this, we hanging out. And Riot USA just got to sit back and watch it and be like, man, what the fuck? Why the fuck do I got to be made out to be a cuck every, every goddamn chance I get? Ice Spice clocking in. Shut your whole ass up and make some drums, nigga. We gonna run this shit to the top, baby. With you on the beats, me doing the raps, and any nigga that need to come close to me doing the rest of the work, we gonna run this bag up. Now I see why people have been comp comparing him to Safari. You know? Now I don't want to make it Seem like Ice Spice is a terrible person because I don't know her. I don't know the dynamic of their relationship. Riot might be down with this shit. He might be down with the swoop. But if we going off of what Baby Storm had to say, she said Riot wasn't with the shits. And because it was an issue, Lil TJ was going to pop a cap in his ass if he didn't calm down. So clearly, at least once upon a time, he ain't like all that. We'll see where things go from here. I'm sure they'll be spending a little bit more time together just to keep the promotion coming. Because what else is promoting Y2K? Nothing. Maybe he'll just have to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Let me know what y'all think of all this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video if this is your first time. See me on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. And I will see y'all on the next one. All right? Much love and respect y'all. Peace. Yeah. King of my city in cul de sac. Uh. Coming, I swing like soldier rags. Yeah. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Yeah. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Yeah. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my shit. Yeah. Spinning the block for the gooder, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. Yeah. We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. Uh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully oppressed. Yeah. I was ready for years and they died of me. Uh. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. Yeah. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Uh. Cross somebody came back with some batteries. Stand for my honor, but you run no gunner. Packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble. I done came too far to be humble.